Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I have another Photoshop texture tutorial for you. This is the third and final of the paper series that I was doing. So I have two other videos if you want to take a look at those. The first one was like a parchment vellum style texture. The second was a handmade recycled paper. So if you're interested in watching those two videos, I'll go ahead and link them up at the top and down in the description so you can check those out. This one is going to be more of a crafty style paper. So we're going to be doing two of them because they're both pretty simple textures. The first one is a construction paper and the second is a cray paper style. So let's go ahead and get started with the construction paper first. We're going to come up here to file new and we're going to use a 1500 by 1500 pixel document resolution 72 RGB 8 bit go ahead and click create. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this background layer, right click and convert it to a smart object. So this is going to be the base of our construction paper. It's just a basic white base and we're going to come up here to filter, noise, add a noise. Our amount is 10% uniform and make sure that monochromatic is checked off. Go ahead and click OK. OK, from here we're going to come back into filter. This time we're going to filter gallery and inside the filter gallery we're going to be using texture. So that's going to be the very last folder here. Go ahead and open that and we're going to use the texturizer for this. The first one, let me turn this one off and we'll work with this right here. So the first one, the texture is going to be sandstone. We're going to scale it to 100% and our relief is 2 pixels. Our light we want coming from the top. And now we're going to add another filter. If you don't have this, and then you would just press the little plus icon right there, and that's going to add another effect. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this one on since it's already there. For the second texture, we're going to be using brush stroke. So that's going to be the second folder here. Go ahead and open that up. And we're using sprayed strokes for this. So go ahead and click on that. Our settings for this one are going to be a length of 20. So the stroke length will be 20. Our spray radius is going to be 5 and our direction is going to be right diagonal. Go ahead and click OK. All right, so that's going to be our first layer. What I'm going to do is right click on this and click on this right here, new smart object via copy. That's very important so that you can get new filters in there. If you just you know, copy it. It's going to copy everything from the previous um, smart object. So it needs to be new smart object via copy. I'm going to click OK on that. And for this one, we're just going to make some adjustments to the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and double click there to get back in there. I'm going to just delete that top layer and we're going to only use one filter for this. And that is going to be close these. So we're going to be working right here in the brush strokes folder and we're going to use the angled strokes, which is going to be that uh, first one there. For this one, our direction is, balance is 50. Our stroke length is 11 and our sharpness is going to be zero. Now you can make adjustments to this. It might be a little strong because I'm, I want to make sure that it shows up on camera. So you might, you know, bring this down a little bit and the same goes for the noise and all of the other filters that we're using. You can always make adjustments to these so that it fits uh, what you like, but I'm just giving you the basic recipe and then you can adjust it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that one. OK, from here, I'm going to go ahead and change the layer mode. And for me, I'm going to use linear burn. I do want this to show up on camera, so I am using linear burn. But you can also use color burn or multiply if you want something a little bit lighter. From here, we're going to add some color to this. So I'm going to just group these. So I just held shift and then I selected both of them, command and the letter G to group them and this is our construction. I'm going to go ahead and add some color to this. I'm going to come down here and click on that little circle icon, choose solid color and add that to the top. So for my brightness, I want to bring it all the way up. Saturation, I'll take to about 30% and then you can use the slider here to get any color you want. I'm just going to leave it on that 
pink color and go ahead and click OK or maybe it's an orangey color. Then from here I'm just going to change the blend mode for this to linear burn. And as I said before, you can work with these. Multiply will work fine as well, but I'm going to go ahead and use linear burn. And then you can just double click here and choose any color, you know, make it darker or whatever. I'm going to press the option key and clip that into my construction paper. So from here, all you do is come up here to edit, define pattern, and then name your pattern and that's going to save inside of Photoshop as a pattern or you can just take this file export you can save it as a quick PNG save it for web so that way you can always keep this right here and then make adjustments as needed to uh, your layers here or change the color or whatever it is that you need to do so that is our first one. Let's go ahead and start on the second one. I'm going to add a new layer there and my background layer is white. So I'm going to press command and delete to fill that with my background color. I'm going to turn these off so that we don't get confused here. We are working on a uh, completely different paper right now. So I'm going to right click, convert this to a smart object. This is our crepe paper. So I'm going to come back in here to filter, filter gallery. And I'm going to turn this off for a minute. I'm going to work here with this with this first layer that I have. So for the first one, we are going to be using texturizer. That again is right here in the very last folder. So again, right here, last one. And we're using sandstone for this. You can just click on that little down arrow and it'll give you a list of options. We're using sandstone. Our scaling is going to be 100%, our relief is 2, and our uh, light is going to be coming from the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to turn this on. That's our sprayed strokes. Again, if you don't have it, the little plus icon right there. Uh, I'm going to be using texturizer again for this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And the settings for this filter are going to be texture canvas. Um, you just click right there, choose canvas, scaling 120%, relief 2, and our light here is coming from the top. I'm going to go ahead and add a solid color overlay, and we're going to do the same thing. I'll just take my brightness up, my saturation to about 30% or so. Of course, you can adjust these to whatever you want, and I'm going to click OK change this to linear burn and that is the crepe paper style okay so i'm going to add another layer here because i want to show you how you would use the crepe paper um, like we did in our last video i gave you a little demonstration of how you could use it to create a more realistic not necessarily realistic but a, a you know something that looks more like a handmade paper so with this one i want to show you how to make that crepe paper style i'm going to come here to my selection tool and i'm just going to make a shape that i think looks like crepe paper something like this and i'm going to fill it with that background color so command and the letter d to fill that shape or that selection there and this is on a new layer i'll hit command and the letter d to deselect that and now I have this shape here, so I'm going to come here to filter. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and add that pattern. So let's come in here and click on that pattern. This is the pattern that I'm using, and I'll leave this at about 125, just so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to right-click and rasterize this because I want that pattern to actually flow with the filter that we're adding on to this. So I'm going to come up here to filter and you can um, set this to smart objects so you can make changes to it later, but this is just a demonstration. So I'm going to come here to filter, distort and wave. Now you can see in the preview right here that I've kind of done this before. Uh, you can see how it started to wave here. So the numbers that I have here are going to be different for your document because you might be using a bigger document, your object, your selection might be bigger or smaller. So all of that's going to depend on the size of your document. I would just pay attention right here to the preview and then 
you know, make adjustments as needed here based on your preview here. So just make sure that your type is sign and undefined area is repeat edge pixels. And then you can come in and, you know, make it more or less um, rippled, move this around, you know, and then just kind of get a feel for it right here. When you're happy with what your preview looks like, go ahead and click OK. And then you'll have something that looks like this. So to me, this looks more like that cray paper style. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of highlight and shadow to this. So I'm going to press the command key. And when you see that little square and the hand right there, just click to make a selection of this. I'm going to come here to the brush tool and I'm just using a basic soft round brush. I have my mode set to color burn uh, my opacity. I'm going to bring these down to maybe 20. We'll start at 20 and see what that looks like. So color burn is actually going to, you know, make this a little bit darker. So it's a little too much. So we'll bring that down to maybe 10%. But you can, you know, just fill these areas here just to give it that, that sense of, of dimension. I'm not a very good artist, but I just wanted to give you an idea you know, of how this texture would look in something like this, like a cray paper, you know, and you can take a little bit more time with this command and the letter D to let that go. You can add a shadow to this um, and then really, you know, style it up and make it look like that cray paper style. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions on this tutorial or if there's something that you'd like to see in the future on this channel. I'm definitely interested in knowing what you want to see. I do a lot of Photoshop tutorials, mainly textures, patterns, and effects. So if you're interested in that type of content, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss another video. And as always, visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.